One of the few downsides to being a professional mathematician is that when you're stuck on a problem and a bit bored, you can't just nip across the corridor to the lab like you can in the other sciences and amuse yourself by blowing up a Bonson burner or, I don't know, growing an ear on the back of a mouse. Instead, we mathematicians like to entertain ourselves by having important philosophical debates. Debates like, just which is the most hilarious binary number, lol? Or, which mathematician has the snazziest dance moves? And perhaps most importantly, which is the best equation? Now, when the earliest mathematicians just used numbers to start counting things around them, they probably had no idea that they were creating a language that would end up being so unreasonably effective at describing the world around them. And while I'd like for mathematicians to be able to take the credit for all of the equations that were invented ever, in reality, it's the physicists who are the masters at using equations to describe the world. And so, in a head squeeze first, I'm going to go and visit two real-life physicists, Tom and Andrew, to see what they think about our question. Hi, chaps. Hi. Hello. Love what you've done with the place. Uh, so, Tom, you first. Uh, tell me about your favourite equation. Uh, well, obviously, the best equation is the one that describes the standard model of particle physics. Now, it's taken 60-odd years to build, but the result is the most powerful, precise and elegant equation that describes pretty much everything. So, let's take a quick look. Uh, this first group of symbols, or term, represents the gauge interaction of the electromagnetic force. This second term mm. represents Actually, how that foot... Tom, I think I'll probably just leave you there, if that's OK. Um, Andrew, can you do better? Uh, tell me about your favourite equation. Oh, well, uh, if I had to pick just one, Hannah, it would have to be the Einstein equation. E equals mc squared, yeah. Uh, no, that's original. Not the popularist Einstein equation. The Einstein equation, g mu nu equals 8 pi t mu nu. Still pretty short. Yeah, uh, and yet the term on the right-hand side summarises everything about the matter in the universe and the way it's moving around at any one moment. And the term on the left-hand side tells you about the curvature of the universe and, and therefore what's going to happen next to all that same stuff. Ingenious, compact, magnificent. Yeah, uh, magnificent? So, did you not see how big my one is? Yeah, yeah, and your one still doesn't even do gravity. All right, so... Andrew, let's not throw our toys out the pram here. So, me? Or terms out of the pram? Uh, you two are such a complete nightmare. OK, it's definitely true that some equations are short. Compact. And some equations are long. Powerful. But the key here is about picking the right equation for the particular problem that you're looking at. Exactly, which is why the standard model is the best equation. Mm -hmm. It's got loads of terms. Uh, I don't think that's... No, and each one of those represents a brand new particle. Ah, so Tom's equation is ugly precisely because each time he's found some new phenomenon in particle physics, he's gone in and added an extra term to his equation, which means it gets longer and longer and longer. Now, OK, the Einstein equation, very different. Sometimes there's a compromise between how many terms you have in an equation and how versatile it is. Yeah, compromise, yeah. you say. Almost like there's a, a balance. Mm. So that must mean that there's an equation which tells you what's the best equation. Oh. I'm on it. You see what I have to work with? Because he just Okay, he well, he maybe, it's not, it. maybe it's not the worst thing ever. No, no, it is the worst idea. OK, so. it is a pretty bad idea. I agree. But what... Tom and Andrew have both misunderstood, is that perhaps the best equations are the ones that are so good at describing the fundamental phenomena of the universe around us that they apply in a whole host of different situations. What do you mean, like, not even physics? Mm. Believe it or not, Andrew, there is more to life than physics. <laughs> OK, let me give you an example. Um, if you take the heat equation... Right? Uh, sorry, you've got to stop you there. Bad example, because that is all about physics. It's about the temperature, T, in different places, uh, how that changes over time. That's the term on the left, whereas the term on the right is telling you how heat spreads out. So physics. Yeah, right, right. But heat isn't the only thing that spreads out over time because uh, diseases or illnesses, like the flu, for example, also spreads out through groups of people over time. And fashions or, or rumours or, or memes on the internet also spread out over time. And each of those situations can be described beautifully using the very same heat equation. 
But actually, once you start looking for it, these analogies and equations crop up all over the place. So, for example, the Navier-Stokes equations can be used to look at how crowds of people move through a corridor or around an open space. Whereas they were actually designed to tell you about the physics of the way that fluids work. Yeah, and in thermodynamics, for uh, example. This is the fundamental theory that tells us the universe is winding down to a cold, lifeless void. Also, let supermarkets predict how much money we'll spend on shopping. Hmm. So, what you're saying is that other people mm. from other disciplines uh, mm. have stolen our physics equations. Mm. Not quite. It's more... Right, 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 right. Um, Here it is. Here it is. The equation that tells you what is the best equation. Tom, no one cares about your equation equation. <laughs> Tom, so. what units have you even used for magnificence? Well, that's a Thompson. <laughs> OK, Tom, we're trying to have a conversation here about the best equation. Equations that are so good at describing the fundamental behaviour of the world, they apply in a whole host of different situations. Right, whereas bad equations only apply to the very specific situation they're imaginable. So, for instance, Tom's equation about equations is not going to be useful for anything else at all. Whereas the Einstein equation of gravity only applies in the situation of gravity. Am I... There's a... There's a... Um, there's a John and I suppose the equation itself. To... Mm. Well, I mean, obviously, sometimes, sometimes equations are so ingenious at describing the particular situation that they're designed for that, you know, that's... OK, so that's maybe we just... can agree then that the best equation is the one that applies best for the particular problem that you're looking at. Exactly. Yeah, okay. exactly. yeah. which is why yeah. I would like to present my equation for the best oh. equation. So, the first term represents the sum of all of the component terms of the original equation itself. The second term is the geometric product of the dimensional constants featuring in the equation. And then the third term is the exponent of the number of dimensions involved in the equation.